നമുക്കൊരു പ്രാർത്ഥനയോടുകൂടി തുടങ്ങാം സർവേ ഭവന്തു സുഖിന സർവേ സന്ധു നിരാമയ സർവേ ഭദ്രാണി പശ്യന്തു മാ കസ്റ്റിഡ് ദുഃഖഭാഗ് ഭവേത് ഇപ്പോൾ കഴിഞ്ഞ ക്ലാസ്സിൽ നിങ്ങൾ വന്നിട്ടുണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല അല്ലേ രണ്ടുപേരുണ്ടായിരുന്നില്ല ഇപ്പോൾ ലാസ്റ്റ് ക്ലാസ്സിൽ വി ഡി ദി എസൻസ് ഓഫ് വേദാന്ത ദാറ്റ്സ് വാട്ട് വി ഡി ഫ്രം മാൻ ടു ക്യൂബിനേഷിപ്പ് എൻ പ്രയർ ടു ദാറ്റ് ക്ലാസ് വി ഡി വാട്ട് ഇ ദാറ്റ് സീക്രട്ട്സ് ഓഫ് ഫൈവ് ഷീറ്റ്സ് റൈറ്റ് ഫ്രം തൈത്തിയൂരി ഓപ്പിനേഷിപ്പ് സോ today i'm planning to do uh, what is uh, from the brahadaranya upanishad there is something called the bliss what is actually it means the great bliss that's what bliss means what paramananda right what is the definition how to achieve that okay i wish you know what really what we did last class you know if you know that as a pre qualification this class will be even easier okay but it's not that difficult i will just give you some examples as you go okay uh, the subject is taken from brahadaranya upanishad brahadaranya means brah brahat means vast so that upanishad is the biggest upanishad in that upanishad at the end of that there is one mantra okay that gives you the essence of vedanta the power of vedanta okay i will read that mantra first and i will try to explain to you it's very easy it's not that difficult Just pay attention uh, the mantra says atmanam jaya vijaniyat ayam asmi idi purushah kimacham kasya khamaya sharirum manu sanchvari of course it's sanskrit what it says is even if you are a realized person see after you understand all this upanishad all this satsang once you realized who you are you know a realized person even after that what is the reason you are suffering still with your body and mind that is the question while answering the questions by the upanishad we will be able to understand it okay why we are still suffering with our body and mind combination even after you realized what is a realized person realized person is you know who you are the body and mind is, is not that's not that you you are really the atma right even after you realize that people are still suffering what is the reason okay so who wrote the uh, bhashya or commentary on this is vidyarane swami god vidyarane swami who is vidyarane swami he was born 600 years ago in karnataka state okay he is the one with the uh, bhashya for this uh, he says even though you know you are not the body and not the mind mano buddhi ahankara chitta nina shivananta roopam shivoham shivo i don't i know i'm not the body i'm not the mind i'm the atma i know that i still i know that but what is the reason kimachan that's what it says ആത്മാനം ദേവനാൻ അയം അസ്മി ഇതി ഐ നോ ദാറ്റ് കിമച്ചം കിമച്ചം മീൻസ് ഡിസയറിങ് വാട്ട് വാട്ട് യു ആർ ഡിസയറിങ് വൺസ് യു ഹാവ് എ ഡിസയർ യു ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ബി അൺഹാപ്പി ഡെഫിനറ്റ് സോ ഡിസയറിങ് വാട്ട് കസ്യ കാമായ ഹു ഈസ് ദി പേഴ്സൺ ആസ്കിങ് യു നോ ഹു ഈസ് ദി പേഴ്സൺ ആസ്കിങ് ഐ വാണ്ട് ദാറ്റ് യു നോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ദി ബാഡി the body cannot ask i need that i want that mind cannot ask that because mind is only feelings you know like thinking power right it's kind of 
thought wells. So that cannot ask. So who is the person asking? I want that. That kind of feeling you get. Because of that, you are suffering. You know that, right? Once you have the desire, definitely you are going to suffer. This is what the the um, the last shloka is trying to explain. Kasya Kamaya, who is the desiring person? Okay. Um, so once you have to understand what you are desiring, whatever you desire, whatever you see in this universe with your eyes, or whatever you can access with your five senses, those things are perishable. Those are not real things. You have to understand that. Okay? Whatever you see is only temporary. It's not satyam. Okay? So if you do mananam on that, okay, mananam, think it's going to be temporary. Suppose you buy something, you want to have something, you want to have something, after some time, it's not there anymore. The last class we did that, right? That's why I said, Sagala Drishyangalum, whatever you see, all these things, Nashwara Malle Krishna. I wrote a poem like that. Sagala Drishyangalum, whatever you see, Nashwara Malle Krishna. Satyamo, what is the real truth? Satyamo ennu means Drukh Matra. Drukh means the real I. Aham, Atma. A realized person knows that, know that, but still he is going to suffer. That's what I'm trying to say. So, once you understand that, you try to negate that. You think, oh, I don't need that. Because even if I get it, after some time, it's not going to be mine. Okay? The other thing what you should do is, uh, suppose there is a, the richest person in the world. Just imagine. He can access, he can get anything in the world. Okay? Whatever he wants, he can get it. You go there and tell him, okay, one day you have to live as the poorest person in the world. Okay? Poorest person. He cannot have any food. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't have anything. He has to live like the poorest man. Think, think. Do you think that person is going to be unhappy? No. Because he knows the next day he get everything. Right? So that is what is asking, Kasya Kamaya. So who is the person desiring that? Because you think you are the person desiring the Atma, you have to understand that that Atma has started from long time ago and is going to end, you don't know. That means that Atma has never born, never is going to die, right? So why you want to be unhappy? Because just like the richest man's story, he know, he knows that after one day he is going to be happy. Like that, in this life, suppose you didn't get all those things, whatever you want to get it, don't worry about it. You continually going, you know, continuous living is there, you know, you are not going to die. Even if the Atma, I'm talking about the Atma, you are not going to die. So you want to be unhappy. You get that point? It's a very subtle point. You got it, right? Yeah. Because this is what happening in this, uh, in this shloka. So you are never born. That is in, in uh, here it says uh, one of the shloka in uh, uh, Bhagavad Gita. Najayade Mriyadeva. You are not born at all. You are not going to die. So whatever you are not going to get now, you may get it in the next journal. Just like next day, the rich man is going to get everything, right? Just like that, if it doesn't happen, this is going to be the next journal. Okay? Sometimes, if you don't get it now, you can think the next journal, definitely you are going to get it. So that way, you will not be unhappy. Hmm. That is what this coin, this stroga is telling. So you have to inquire who is the person trying to get it, whatever you want to get it. Okay. And uh, 
ലൈഫ് കണ്ടിന്യൂസ് ശരീരം മനുസഞ്ചരി ശരീരം ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡൈ ബട്ട് ദി മൈൻഡ് ആൻഡ് നോട്ട് ദി മൈൻഡ് ദി ആത്മ ഇസ് ഗോയിങ് ടു കണ്ടിന്യൂസ്ലി ലിവ് സോ ദീസ് ആർ ദി ഫോർ ആസ്പെക്ട് യു ഷുഡ് ഡൗൺ ഡൗ വിൽ ടോക്ക് അബൌട്ട് ദി റിയൽ തിങ് വൈ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു സഫർ ഹൗ ക്യാൻ വി ഗെറ്റ് ഔട്ട് ഫ്രം ദി സഫറിങ് ദറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾഡ് ദുഃഖ നിവൃത്തി പരമാനന്ദ പ്രാപ്തി ദാറ്റ്സ് വാട്ട് വി ആർ ട്രൈങ് ടു ഡു if you want to know that you should have seven aspects in spiritual life okay for that i give you three examples you have to think one example from the previous uh, upanishad like the sheets secrets of five sheets i wrote it here that you this is the atma and this is just the body and mind think that okay the other thing i told you about the 10 man story remember 10 people cross the road and one person is missing think that and the other one you have to think is rope and snake people mistake the rope as snake okay keep that three examples in your mind now i'm going to get into the subject okay in spiritual journey this is a spiritual journey in this spiritual journey there are seven stages you have to think the first problem what we have is atnana that is called ignorance that is the primary reason for unhappiness for anyone for example first thing look at that the 10 person is crossing one person is missing right so that is atnana that is atnana here he think it is not a snake he thinks the rock as a snake that is atnana complete ignorance here also he doesn't know he thinks what i see the body and mind is real you so that is the primary reason for all the unhappiness in this world okay that is first step that is the most big power you know we start from there okay the second thing is avarana there are seven stages i'm talking the second thing which is avarana what is avarana avarana is a veiling power that means there is something I'll give you a number this one there is something is covering this rope okay it's not a physical cover this is a cover you made from your mind an imaginary cover that's called avarana you know veiling power it is not a physical thing you cover it no from your mind it constitutes like something just like that here the ninth person only nine the 10 person here covering you don't see it because you don't know how to turn around and use this subject okay that's called an avaran here also same thing you don't see the atma it covers five avaranas right five sheets so that is one of the reason you don't see that okay the third one is called the vikshepa see there are another things you are doing with your mind you know these are all happening very fast you know when you put the avaran what you do with your mind that you do the conclusion immediately you know what is the conclusion you already made oh this is a snake you have already made that it's like uh, completing the project and conclude the result without really knowing it you did two things with ignorance and with the avarana you already made conclusion you are not going further right so that is called vikshepa without knowing you write the conclusion so you get the unhappiness right the 10th person is missing you are unhappy and there's a snake you are afraid in life and here you you're not seeing this you see only the body and mind and of course i'm going to die after seven years so because of that conclusion immediately because of the first two things ignorance avarana immediately who ask you to make conclusion no now the third the fourth stage what is called paraksha jnana that means at the third situation before you make the conclusion in life okay like a jnani is coming a, a 
great person is coming and telling you, don't worry about it. The tenth person is not missing. Okay? At least believe me. And this is not a snake. And uh, you are not body and mind. Right now, you don't know, but at least believe me. Okay? Don't take conclusion. Believe at this point. Okay? See, this happens in our life, right? When we were a child, very young, the parents will tell you something. The child doesn't know. But you believe, right? You plan. Just like that, if you go to a college, say when you go to a Columbia University, you study something, yes, study physics. The first day of class, the professor is writing something, say quantum mechanics or atomic theory. You don't know anything. You don't understand really at all anything. Do you think the professor is completely wrong and the book he's teaching is completely mistake? No, first you believe him, right? Even if you don't understand. And thinking one day I'm going to know all this theory. That's what a clever person will do. If you're a totally ignorant, a fool person, foolish person, if he thinks the professor is completely wrong and he gets away from the university, what what's going to happen? He's the loser, right? So the, at this stage, you have to believe. This is where our Granthas are coming. See Ramayanam, Bhagavadam, so many things, you know, so many Nidhis we have, you know. Try to learn it. They're telling you something. So at least you just believe right now. You know, you're not there yet. At least just believe. Don't make conclusions yet. Okay. That is, that is the stage is called uh, Parochakyana. Okay. You're not there yet. Now, once you read all these things, you start believing in all those things, you know. The next stage comes, which is called Aparokshatyana. What that means, once you read all these things, you realize, oh, there is something is like there. So maybe you have to go further. That is the time this Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga and uh, Raja Yoga all these are coming. So the Guru is telling, the Upanishad is telling, to realize all these things, sit down and do dhyanas. Okay? It's giving you dhyana or upasana. Close your eyes, you know, take a deep breath. Those are one sadhana you try to do it to achieve the goal. But all of a sudden somebody is saying, no, no, I cannot do that because if I sit, close my eyes, I'm afraid, I cannot concentrate. That time the Guru said, okay, don't worry about open your eyes. Okay, read some bhajan books. Okay, or do nama japas. Any of those kind of things. That is called bhakti. You know, bhakti yoga. You do bhakti yoga, you go to the temples and you do the all kind of bhajans, whichever you like. So if somebody said, no, 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 I don't like doing bhajans or jaba and all. There are some people like that. So then, okay, then you do karma yoga. Get out from here. There is a village. In that village, very, very poor people living. Help, help them and don't get, expect anything from them. Try to help all those people. So our rishis are giving you so many options, whichever you like. Karma Yoga, Raja Yoga, or any sadhanas, or Bhakti Yoga, anything you do. Once you do all those things, what happens? You realize this is, the, this is the way you convert your knowledge. You got knowledge, right? And convert that knowledge into wisdom. You know, that is called the practical Vedanta. That is practical, um, um, what do you call for that? Practical living. You know, once you convert that knowledge into this wisdom, then you start realizing this is what it is. Okay. Once you understand that, what happened is you convert your life into reality. That means what you're trying to help the living God in front of you. You know, there are people who want, you know, poor people are there. Needy people are there. The moment you start 
helping them, helping them, then what happened is your sorrows start going away slightly, you know, one step at a time. Slowly it goes away because you realize there are people who are below than you. They need help. Okay. Um, then what happened is uh, the sixth sixth stage comes. That is called the dukkha navarti. Okay. Dukkha navarti means once you see all these things happening, you know, then your sorrow, you know, you feel unhappy, right? Here, what happened is you try to understand there is something called Atma, okay? And you've, if something happens to you, okay, then you have to, you may think it is not happening to me, it's happening to your, my body and mind. Not really happening to me. So you start separating you and your mind away from you. You try to get that gap, you know, developing that gap. Okay. So always you start thinking, it's not me. If anything happens, it's not me. It's happening to you on my body or my mind. And that definitely is going to be perishable. But me, I'm still continuing. Okay. Continuing. It's like um, anantam. Anantam anantam. Once you know you are anantam, you're going to be happy. You know, these are all small steps to get happy. See, one of the reasons why we are unhappy is we think we are limited. We are going to die another 20 years, 20 years. Within that time, I need everything. But at my later stage, I need a lot of money, like uh, insurance. You know, if I'm sick, I want to do that. If I'm sick, I need this money. Those kind of things. We are limited. You know, that is one of the main reasons in, in this physical world people are unhappy. You know, that insurance part. When you get old, who is there to help me? You know, that kind of feeling. Hmm? So those kind of things trying to get away from you, if you think this way. Okay, you keep separate from that. Let it happen. Whatever is going to happen, is going to happen. Definitely. There is no way you can fight it and get away from it. If the God decides something, it's going to happen. And you have to think it's not going to happen to you. Really, it's going to happen to your mind and your body only. Okay? And you are continuously living. Okay? Just like the poor man and the rich man I told you. You know, one day he's living unhappily. But he knows. He knows that he's going to have another life, you know, after one day. Just like that. If this happens... These, these are the thoughts you have to think to be happy, you know. And if you are peaceful, you cannot say you are peaceful. You have to say, I am the person who sees peace in my mind. That way you keep you separate, right? If you say peaceful, then that peace will go away. You have to say, you have to change your thinking saying, I am the one seeing the peace in you. I am the peace itself. I am not peaceful. That's why we say Satyam Shivam Suntaram Shantam. I am peace itself. I am not peaceful. I am the peace itself. So once you get that knowledge, then again you get one more step ahead to get to the bliss. You know, you, you, so you feel whatever happens, it happens outside the world. It's not touching me. Everything either in the world or it may be in my body or in my mind, but it's not touching me. That kind of feeling you get. Again, these are all saying by the Upanishad, okay? Brahadarunya Upanishad. I'm also a learned person or a, an uh, enlightened person. I'm just like you only. But the Upanishad saying, think this way. So you get some kind of relax, some kind of happiness, you know. Try to change a little bit your thoughts. Don't attach with your body all the time, you know. Anything happens, you think, oh my God, it's not like that. Okay. Like last time I told you the story about the, if you go to the beach, what do you see? Water, right? You see a big wave is coming, 
small waves are coming bubble is coming big bubbles are coming forms are there right complaining a big wave a small wave is complaining looking at the big wave a, a tsunami wave and complaining what a beautiful wave you know i'm not that beautiful i'm not strong enough like the bubble also complaining i'm a big bubble small bubble complaining to the big bubble oh look at that big i'm small i'm going to die just like the forms also and what happened all these are coming to the shore all these are seeing the shore all of a sudden right then everybody thinks, oh i'm going to die this is what happening in the sh if you go to the beach this is what you're going to see but what happened a guru wave is telling why you are complaining all this you are all going to die but think who are you actually whether you are a bubble you are going to be a wave little later or if you are a foam you are nothing but water right you understand that point just like that we are all why we are complaining in this world whether you are rich poor beautiful you have nothing or you have everything you have disease we are all going to die we are all one whether you believe it or not you are all divine that's what is coming down to the ultimate saying whether you believe it or not we are all one we are all divine whether you accept or not we are the god that is the ultimate reality that is the core teaching of vedanta okay so once you start thinking this way you start getting dukkha nivrutti you know once you get the dukkha nivrutti what do you get paramananda prapti you know that like you get the ultimate bliss see finally what we get is definition of god that's what we're trying coming down to what is the definition of god god that is uh, brahma existence consciousness bliss we are talking about the bliss right now last class we did existence remember i believe you, you lost that class right last yeah the existence we defined that that is I just uh, go through it in two minutes anything you see in this universe anything any item you can see with your eyes or with your sense organs that has two components the first component we are missing that is an error just like we do the ignorance that means if you see this this bottle you know you see only the nama roopa only without the nama roopa you cannot comprehend see because we have only five senses to comprehend this has two components the first component or the primary component you are not even seeing it what is that existence this should have an existence right only if something have an existence you can put nama roopa on top of it right suppose you think about you you have a shape human shape right on top of the human shape you put the name that's your choice somebody put the name most important thing you should have an existence which you don't see which you cannot sense with your five senses pure existence only if it is there you can put your nama and rupa first sorry our first rupa the manusha rupa then you put the name just like that the whole universe is like that okay that is one of the definition of ka that is what is called it's always there the existence is always there is new non dual that is advaita okay so only if there is an existence you can put the nama roopa which we don't realize we cannot comprehend that is the error we are making okay that is one of the reason we get dukkham we think once the body is gone you gone no the existence is still there see if something if the bottle is gone after 100 years it's not really the matter is not going it's still there so the existence is still remains 
only the shape is changing any things are like that only the shapes are changed the matter remains okay so that existence pure existence existence is always there that is what the atma this is always there only these avaranas are going in the next class i'll tell you why we are not getting it why we are not realizing okay the main reason is we are not realizing is if you know the third avarana which is manomaya you know manomaya this is the main problem i'll next class i'll tell you because today i don't have time manomaya that is nothing to do with uh something to do with ahankar you know ahankaram that is the reason we cannot get in here they make it as a big iron fence here like this so we cannot get inside when we get here we get stuck that is the reason and that is the next class i'll explain to you so once you start thinking this way once you realize yeah. 